Yeah, I just made up that word. Fine, whatever. I'm going with it. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. It's maybe the most important thing in representational drawing, in my opinion. When combined, they create the image in the mind of the viewer. It's got a $9,865 value, and I'm giving it to you people as a gift. It makes it easier to draw when you realize that all you're doing is just drawing a series of, like, abstract shapes. Thank you for asking me those questions, my rhetorically convenient friend. You're welcome. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Welcome back to Team Cool Guy Art School, and today I'm going to be talking about shape. This is my first instructional video, and I'm talking about shape because I think uh, shape and the ability to represent shape is of critical importance. It's maybe the most important thing in representational drawing, in my opinion. That's why it's the first lesson. Now, you may be asking yourself, and you may be asking the screen, what is shape and why is it important? And if you are asking those questions, thank you for asking me those questions, my rhetorically convenient friend. In terms of what is shape, when I think shape, I think the silhouette of an object, the, the outer edges of an object, the object itself, like a car or a tree or a dragon, like shapes of uh, light and dark within a given object, the highlights and the glint of the eye of a dragon and so on. So those that's what I mean by shape. It's an abstraction and it's a series of puzzle pieces that go to make up an image, right? So that's what shape is. And why is shape important? Well, there's two reasons, I think. The ability to represent an object that you see in nature or in your imagination is of critical importance to representational drawing. If you want the viewer to see what you see or if you want them to know what you're actually drawing the ability to represent that thing or represent it is of critical importance first of all and second of all the shape of the shapes that you choose for your images they have different emotional Im impacts right so uh, an image that's got a lot of uh, shapes that have hard and sharp edges to it that has a much different emotional impact than uh, images that uh, involve a lot of softer paisley-esque kind of softer uh, shapes right so Compositionally, I think shape is of critical importance as well. So the thing I find really, really cool about shape is that you're never actually drawing a thing. You're drawing a series of abstract shapes that go together to uh, create the thing in the mind of the viewer. When you see the image of a face or a dragon or a car or anything you want to name, you're actually seeing a series of puzzle pieces. This is why you, when you see a professional artist working, if they want to draw a paint, uh, like a face, for instance, they'll use a mirror and look at the image through the mirror to invert it. I use welding glass. If you're drawing from a photograph. You will sometimes turn it upside down to uh, trick your mind into realizing that you're not actually drawing, for instance, a face. You're drawing a series of abstract shapes that when combined together with different lightnesses and darknesses, if that's, yeah, I just made up that word. Fine, whatever, I'm going with it. But when combined, they create the image in the mind of the viewer. So here's a little animation that I've produced in order to get past the abstract and understand what exactly I'm talking about. It's a series of puzzle-like pieces that when combined together, create the image that you're about to see. This is a very quick little animation of a tracing of a drawing I did in preparation for a master copy a while back. And what I want you to notice is that these are just a series of abstract shapes that define something that our brains recognize. So think of these as ceramic tiles or bits of stained glass that, when combined in a particular ordered manner, send visual signals to our brains that allow us to quote unquote see an image. So we don't see a tree, for instance, we see a series of shapes each of which have different colors and levels of lightness and darkness that send tree-like signals to our brains. So this is a subtle but very important idea that I'm going to be coming back to often. But for now, let's just get back to the idea of uh, the shape animation. So as I say, this is a tracing of the drawing I did for the master copy. And I created this animation to get the idea across. When we see something, we're just seeing a series of ordered shapes that send signals to our brains. Uh, I'm going to keep hammering on this idea. Uh, the image is constructed in our brains, not on the canvas or on the page. Uh, for the record, this was a drawing I did in preparation of a master copy of the brilliant Russian painter Valentin Serov's portrait of Princess Olga Ordova and her amazing hat. Uh, I'm afraid I sold this copy, otherwise I'd be able to show you the finished product. But either way, I hope the point is made though. Uh, when you draw, you're putting together a bunch of shapes, which is why shape is so critically, critically important to us as we learn how to draw.
As often as possible in my videos, I want to give you something practical you can use to improve. And the following exercise is one that I found helped me quite a bit, improve my ability to uh, re to see shape and to represent it on an image, right? So it's a little cumbersome. It takes a little while, but I guarantee you at the end of it, you will be able to uh, master shape and you'll be a much, much better drafts person as a result. There's a little video or a little book in the um, description below that you have access to. That is a book that I produced myself of a series of abstract shapes. It's got a $9,865 value and I'm giving it to you people as a gift. You're welcome. And so yeah, here's a little uh, little animation of what I mean and how to go about the exercise. Check it out. Okay, so here's an exercise that I guarantee will help you with your shapes. In order to do this exercise, you're just going to need a blank sheet of paper, like a piece of printer paper for instance. And what you're going to want to do is you want to draw six boxes in two columns uh, on your sheet just like this. They're going to be identically sized boxes and draw them on the sheet just like this. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and draw a single five-sided abstract shape in each of the boxes down one of the columns. Now which column you ask? That depends. If you're left-handed like a normal person, draw these shapes on the right-hand column and if you're a freakish right-handed person, draw your shapes down the left-hand side of the page. The reason for this is that you don't want the image to be covered up by your drawing hand. Okay, so now that you've got all three uh, boxes filled with five-sided shapes, uh, what you're gonna wanna do in the blank or empty boxes is represent those shapes perfectly, right? So you wanna copy the shapes that you've just drawn perfectly in the empty box. What you wanna do is you wanna like find each point in uh, the abstract shape and try to measure exactly how high up from the bottom of the box it is and how far over from the left or the right hand side of the box it is, right? So you wanna get its X, Y coordinates if you're a graphically minded person and then draw you know, the lines between each of these points to try to, to represent perfectly the image that you drew at the beginning of this exercise. And then when you're done, when you're satisfied that what you've represented looks exactly like the first five abstract shape or the first five sided abstract shapes you drew, tear the sheet in half along the long axis and then hold both sides of the sheet up to a light source and compare where your drawing matched or didn't match the original abstract shapes, right? This is a very, very powerful exercise and really, really helps our ability to represent shape perfectly. Now, if you do this many, many times, I guarantee you that your shapes and your ability to represent shape will get much, much better. Okay, so that about does it for the uh, free video on shapes. Just to sum up, uh, shapes are important because they uh, provide emotional impact. They're compositionally very, very important, right? So hard, jagged edge shapes, they have a different emotional impact than softer shapes. Even more important, the ability to represent a shape you see in nature is of critical, critical importance. If you want to draw representationally and you want to draw in a manner that people will know what it is that you're drawing, when you are drawing, don't think you're drawing a face. Don't think you're drawing a particular thing other than a series of puzzle pieces of different lightnesses and darknesses. And that actually, in some ways, is a liberating thought because it makes it easier to draw when you realize that all you're doing is just drawing a series of like abstract shapes and when combined they give the viewer what you intend to give the viewer. When I said lightness and darkness that hints at the next thing we're going to be talking about which is sometimes called shading, sometimes called value. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about value actually. I see some stuff online that's kind of well it's it's just objectively wrong so I'm really interested in talking about value next time but that does it for the, um, the free part on uh, shapes. I'm going to be talking about shapes to my Patreon followers in the uh, next video that's going to be behind the wall. Speaking of, if you want to support the channel, there's links to how to do that below. And um, there's also other YouTube related things with the buttons and the subscribes and the shares and such and the comments and the likes and the dislikes because that also helps keep the channel flying. So thank you very much for watching. See you next time when I'm going to be talking about lightness, darkness, also known as value. Bye.